now, so we've we've seen platforms uh, with uh, uh, Amadeus. We've seen ecosystem that are being built by the Met, and we've seen uh, also uh, like um, uh, we've seen also kind of a, a marketplace with eBay, who's told us a story about APIs. And so now, to end this track, we're really glad to host uh, uh, Alan Glickenhaus that will actually deliver us a talk about exactly how to understand in this what's next in digital, like ecosystem, marketplace, and platforms directly powered by APIs. Hi, Alan, how are you? I'm good, Maddie. how are you? I'm doing well, doing well. So we talked about platforms, ecosystem, and marketplace on the last three talks. So now you can make the, the, the wrap up, the sum up of, of everything. So I should just say any questions, right? Is that, uh, is that keep, keep it short? We still need the sum up of it, right? With all, okay. the, all the what you see. So you can, you can, if you have slides, you can share your screen. I have slides, yes. Uh, I, I have slides. Yeah, it's a, it's a big part of your research, all these topics. This is why we wanted to have you there. Yeah, let's get in here and let's get in here. And how is that looking? Good? That's looking good. You have 25 minutes. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mehdi. So, um, yeah, so it's great that we've covered uh, each one of these parts. We'll see if my definitions and everybody else's definitions uh, line up uh, together. Um, so let me introduce myself. I'm Alan Glickenhaus. For those I haven't met, I hope that uh, we can connect on LinkedIn, if not at one of these API days in person in the future. Um, I'm the digital transformation and API business strategist for IBM. And, and basically what that means is that I work with a lot of businesses around the world uh, on what they can do with APIs and how they can execute a digital transformation. Uh, do that by uh, speaking at conferences like this, but also one-on-one -on -one workshops. And, and when I'm not doing that, I'm writing about it. Um, so here you see six categories of things that I write about. Um, and at the end of this deck, which hopefully will get up, uh, published through API Days, um, you will get links to all of these articles, uh, which I think there's over 150 of them now. Um, so for this particular topic today, I'm covering just a couple of things that I've written about from, uh, from two of these categories. So, so let's get into this. Um, so I wanted to do something different. I've done a lot of different topics over the years at API Days, and I've done one on this particular chart. In fact, uh, we call this our journey map, which is a maturity model for where we see the API economy um, going and how businesses move through the their journey um, with APIs. And it, it talks to various steps along the way from an IT-driven um, initiative to a kind of a partnering between business and IT, to, to a business-led initiative. And one of the things that it talks to in some of the later stages is digital marketplaces and, and ecosystems and, and things like that. And, and so um, in my conversations with businesses, I'm seeing a lot of questions in this area that people are starting to think about uh, ecosystems and, and, and marketplaces and platforms. And, and so uh, I thought it'd be good to kind of uh, get a couple of definitions down for what they are and, and talk about you know, what we're seeing as far as the conversations go. Um, so let me give you a question, the audience out there in, in virtual land. Um, here's two different business scenarios. And which of these scenarios do you think requires an ecosystem? So the first one is a car buyer is shopping for a new car. They research their options. They decide what car they want to buy. They purchase the car from an auto dealership. And they want to get financing and obtain insurance coverage uh, at that same time. So that's, that's scenario one. Scenario two is... Uh, a shopper is in a retail store or on the web or mobile, wherever they're shopping, and they want to buy a present for their uh, child for the holidays. And, and they know, you know, if you've experienced this, there's this hot toy that everybody wants for this particular uh, holiday season. And that's what the, the child wants. So they go to the retail store and, and they get the, the, the toy uh, for that for their, um, for their child, right? So raise your hand. How many of you think, um, you know, the scenario one needs an ecosystem? Okay, now raise your hand if you think scenario two needs an ecosystem. I saw some of you didn't raise your hands out there. I just joked. But anyway, uh, the answer is both of these need an ecosystem. So the first one is, is, is pretty clear. Um, we're talking about things that involve multiple industries here. You, you've got a car uh, sale kind of a scenario, but there's financing through a, a, a banking um, a business and an insurance, right? So, so you can certainly put together an ecosystem um, that would solve this in a one-stop shop kind of a, a mode for this particular um, scenario. 
The second one may not be as obvious, uh, but but if you've ever experienced this this buying the hot toy thing, um, you know that's not as simple as just showing up at any store and, and and buying it. So so you don't want the you know the consumer doesn't want to run around to ten different stores and hope that they find it in each one. Um, so there's a whole set of supply chain issues, a whole set of um, um, inventory and and sales and delivery. Of course, especially delivery nowadays with uh, with COVID nineteen. And so again, there's a, 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 a supply chain cycle of ecosystem, as well as maybe even a sell side uh, for the various participants in this ecosystem. So, so with that in mind, I, I did some thinking in this space uh, about how we create ecosystems. How do we build this? And, and where has it been in the past and where is it going in the future? And, and so, um, one of the big API scenarios that I've talked to businesses about, you know, even before talking about ecosystems, is about partnerships. And so, in the past, we called this a partnership, right? And and so, from a business perspective, when we would want to partner with another business, there would be a business relationship discussion. We would have, you know, some kind of a, a business level discussion about how we are going to work together, what any kind of financial uh, arrangements are going to be. And, and that can take weeks or months to establish, you know, how we want to work together. And then, you know, after we agree on how we're going to work together, the technical people get involved and we have to expose some interfaces from our systems so that they can consume them and, and you know, place orders with us or, you know, invoke uh, whatever transactions or data they need to invoke. And we'd set up the security for that and give them the interface and make sure that it works and handhold them on boarding. And, and it could take, again, weeks or months for that for that to happen. And so I get this done and I now have a partner that I'm working with. And then I want to work with a second partner and I get to do the whole thing all over again. It's like, you know, deja vu. We, we just did this and, and we get no value of it out of having done it the first time and so on and so on for each one of the partners that we uh, that we want to work with. So so this is not good. Um, we, we'd like to uh, be able to get partnerships going faster, especially when we're thinking about things like an ecosystem, which implies maybe many partners. So. We're still, unfortunately, in this phase of, of um, manual uh, business relationship uh, uh, establishment. So even today, you know, that we haven't done anything really yet to fix that, uh, although I'll, I'll talk about uh, where that's going next. Um, but certainly APIs have helped us from uh, an onboarding of partners, right? So if we have uh, a sell side partner or a supply side partner, we can identify the interfaces that they need, build the APIs for that. Now, when the business relationship discussion is done, all we have to do is give them access to the developer portal and they can consume those APIs and I don't have to do the handholding or setting up the security or any of that because I've already done it as I built the APIs. And when the second and third partners come in, I don't have to rebuild the APIs. I already have the APIs. I just have to give them access to the same APIs and they can onboard themselves. So on the IT side, we've done some pretty good progress about you know speeding this up and, and getting the ability to have more partners, but the business side is still kind of struggling. So as I think about where do we want this to go in the future, and, and by the way, I've not yet won the lottery, so my predictions for the future are not always 100%, but um, you know, I, I think we're good with the, with the IT side, at least for a while. Maybe we'll want to shrink that to even less over time, but for now, days of onboarding is, is not a bad uh, time frame. We want to get this down to days too. We want to get the business discussion to happen very quickly, and 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 we want a second and third business discussion to be able to use the same kind of terms and conditions that we got from the first one. So the question that I ask here on the slide is, how are we going to make this happen? And, and I'm going to come back to that thought when I get to the marketplaces discussion in just a few minutes, right? But that's that's where we need to go. We, we need to we can't take weeks or months to to. You know, get new partners if we're thinking about a digital ecosystem and digital transformation. So let, let's start to talk about marketplaces. Um, so, you know, marketplaces in general are where buyers and sellers come together to transact business. And so, if you apply that to APIs, it's where you, you know, consumption of APIs happens, right? And, and so, um, in talking to um, businesses about marketplaces, I'm getting a lot of questions about this. People, uh, businesses are coming to me and saying, we want to establish a marketplace. Uh, and my first question to them is, what do you mean? <laughs> because sometimes what they mean is that they want a marketplace 
an API marketplace that establishes a, a presence for their APIs to be um, consumed by people outside their company, which most people would say is not really a marketplace. That That's just a developer portal that you expose APIs to an external audience, your partners, you know, or, or your public audiences. Um, and, and so um, we can argue and debate over the wording. I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, say that some will say this is not a marketplace. Um, others will say it is. If you think this is your marketplace goal, it's a pretty easy one to accomplish. Um, you can use, you know, a, a vendor product like ours that comes with a developer portal and, and expose your APIs to the audiences you want to expose them to and, and they can consume them. So they consider this a marketplace because they're starting to think about, you know, exposure of their APIs outside the company, which is hopefully going to drive some kind of business for their business, for their company, right? So, so monetization of some sort. Um, the more traditional kind of thinking about marketplaces is, is a many to many kind of a scenario. So it's not just one company's APIs, but it's many companies' APIs that are being exposed to many consumers. And, and, and so we actually have a company, uh, a customer of IBM that is doing this, and I'll explain uh, how, how they're working it. Um, so in this case, in this example, uh, this, this is a bank. Uh, it's a commercial bank that works with their commercial customers, and, and they've established a trust relationship between their bank and, and these customers. So so, um, you know, they're part of their business processes. They, they do things to, um, to, to support the, their customers' business. And, and so uh, what these customers are looking for is uh, someone who can, can validate and provide more than just, uh, they want to provide that ecosystem, the things that they need to be successful for their customers, which include banking, but not just banking. Maybe they include car sales or, or, or insurance sales or things like that. So. What this business is doing is vetting and onboarding other businesses' APIs. And so they take, uh, in this case, it's just showing shipments, and, and you can have other ones uh, for payments and, and for whatever other API products other companies are exposing. And the point is that this marketplace owner, the one that says your business on the bottom left, is validating that these other businesses are, in fact, valid businesses to do work with. They're not somebody who's going to steal your credit cards or do nasty things to you. Maybe they're even doing more as far as um, you know the quality of service uh, the, uh, requirements that it need. Uh, these other businesses need to be in to be part of that marketplace. So they're forming a, a place where the ecosystem can come together to provide capabilities for an audience. In this case, the side that says your customers. And then when these customers come in, they identify who they are. Um, the bank. Uh, it exposes these uh, all these um, APIs together in this joint marketplace, and and transactions occur. And, and this is really what most people think of when they think about marketplaces. This is what what they're talking about. Um, now I'm getting approached by a lot of businesses that say they want to be that, and, and and I guess the big question is why should it be you? Um, you, you know, so so if you want to create a marketplace. Um, why would an API provider want to put their APIs in your marketplace? Most of the people I'm talking to are not asking to be put in other people's marketplaces. They want to run their own because that's a pretty powerful position that you know we'll talk about here. But um, so one reason why people might want to be in your marketplace is because that's probably not the case as you're starting out. But but if that's the case, then then you could be a very attractive place to to be for other people to put their APIs. More likely at the beginning, there's some kind of joint um, industry scenario that your APIs and their APIs together will work you know, well for a solution that, that consumers are looking for. And so that kind of a synergy will drive people to be in there. Um, the monetization aspects of this, I mean, if you make it free um, to be in your marketplace for API providers, that may attract a lot of API providers, which because you have a lot of APIs there, can attract a lot of consumers to come there. And then everybody makes money because uh, all your APIs are, are being seen by a lot of people and used by a lot of people. So that's that's a very valid model. Um, on the other hand, you may also then say, well, you know, I want to get some some value directly from these providers where they, you know, they give me money uh, because I'm providing consumers for them or I'm doing other things like, you know, um, making sure that, uh, um, you know, 
I'm, I'm validating that they're okay, and, and therefore um, people will use them and, and expect that that uh, I'm going to be able to um, again provide value to them as an API provider through consumers that understand that they are in fact good businesses to work through. Um, the the next category of things to think about is what kind of value add are you providing for um, for these API providing companies. Uh, you, you might just be providing a home where they can advertise their APIs. Pro, you know, Programmable Web is a very famous website where you can just put a web, uh, an API out there and, and anybody can come find it. They're not doing any real validation of whether your API is good or not. Um, and, and, and so it's just kind of a lookup service for finding APIs. Then you could do a lot more than that. You could actually host the other uh, providers' APIs in your portal or on your gateway uh, and perform some kind of security uh, and, and then pass the execution on to them, or you might even perform some of the things for them, like billing or analytics and, and so on. So depending on how much you provide, um, you may justify uh, additional revenue that uh, people will pay you. Um, and, and then the last thing I talk about here is, uh, are you verifying the API providers, right? So, so you, again, might just say anybody that comes here, you know, and wants to put their APIs out here can can do that. But what if they have a bad API? What if it um, you know exposes uh, a virus or you know steals credit cards or, or or something like that? Is there any kind of liability for your company because you've uh, exposed that API to consumers? So you know, again, different levels of provider verification can happen where you validate that they're a reputable business or that you validate that they meet certain quality levels or whatever. And, and, and like I said, this can get complicated. Um, and, and again, what kinds of um, uh, promises are you making to your customers about the APIs that are in your marketplace? So a lot of people are coming to me and saying they want to be a marketplace, but you need to validate that you are willing to step up to some of these concerns around being a marketplace um, and, and, and what that means to your consumers and what that means to your business. Um, if you do this well, uh, you're holding a very valuable position in in the uh, ecosystem as someone that's exposing, um, you know, and controlling the exposure to customers. So, um, so think about you know all these things as as you're thinking about being a marketplace. It's it's not just as simple as let's throw up a portal and 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 you know have a bunch of things out there. Um, so um, you know, coming back to the thought of ecosystems. Uh, you know, once you've done this and, and you've got things in a, a, a standard kind of an, a, a, a market approach that, that, you know, this is the cost for doing it. Uh, uh, it could be different costs for different APIs, but, but there's a, a consistent cost. Now we've taken that business relationship discussion away from the weeks or months down to potentially days as, as these consumers come in and look in your marketplace and have the standard terms and conditions for they can sign up for these partnering APIs, uh, we can onboard um, at a business level quicker and at the IT level quicker. So ecosystems and marketplaces, um, you know, are, are pretty strongly related in many ways. So the last thing I wanted to talk about um, in this area is platforms. It's another topic that I'm hearing a lot about, another word that you hear over and over again, and it means different things to different people. Um, so. If you're talking to somebody from IBM or maybe even some of our competitors and, and you ask for uh, you know, a, a question about a platform, they're going to tell you about their API management platform, right? So ours is called API Connect and, and it runs, you know, it, it helps you build and manage and secure APIs and, and put them on a portal and has a gateway and all this kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so, so, you know, we have those. A lot of other people have uh, similar offerings, not as good. That's my IBM uh, marketing pitch there. Um, but, um, but what we want to talk about is the, the second definition here, right, which is an organization that brings together two or more distinct but inter interdependent groups. And, and, you know, they can consume APIs and create a foundation for interactions between them. And, and this one, I didn't make up this definition. I, I grabbed it off of um, Reese uh, Fisher's um, site. And, and uh, that's linked to there. So, so given this definition, it sounds a lot like what I just spoke about. And in fact, I, I kind of um, think that it is. So um, if you think about a digital platform, what many businesses think of as a digital platform to me is equal to a digital ecosystem coming together in an API marketplace. So the goal 
is to create a marketplace to reach new customers and opportunities and improve your business reach. And the platform is where the consumers are and you want to be in it. And, you know, this is, this is uh, oftentimes when people are talking about creating a digital platform, they're talking about creating an ecosystem of partners that supply APIs in this marketplace to consumers where it's a one-stop shop to get what you need. And, 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 and many businesses, this is what the goal is. This is what they want to be. Now, uh, Mehdi mentioned eBay and, and eBay and, and um, Amazon and, and all these others. They, they go a little further. Um, so in some cases, you might choose to say a digital platform is going to be greater than a digital ecosystem in a marketplace. Uh, and what I mean here is these kinds of systems, these Ebays and these Amazons, where uh, people are building their business on top of your business, that, that um, many tenants can come in and actually build a commerce um, um, business on top of eBay, uh, using the eBay APIs and the eBay services for e-commerce and billing and payments and messaging and social and all these other things. And, and so they have built a digital platform that puts together an ecosystem of uh, APIs that some of which they provide and some of which may be provided by others um, that new businesses can actually form and run on. And, and, and that's, of course, an even more powerful uh, position in the marketplace than than, um, than the previous definition. So uh, whichever of these is, is, is your goal, um, you know, th these are strong places in the API or digital ecosystem uh, to be. So let me just wrap this up. Um, you know, when you're thinking about ecosystems and who are, you know, gonna be your partners, uh, the, a topic I've, I've spoken about many times is identifying the businesses next door. What, what industries do people deal with that are next to yours? That, that um, example of buying a car, and when I buy a car, I need insurance and I need a bank, right? So, so these are businesses next door, right? Um, you know, it, it could be retail with supply chain or, or a CPG company with retailers or whatever it may be. So you have businesses next door that are logical ecosystem partners for you. And so given that you understand who they are, what do they need from you? What, how do you simplify and expedite this ecosystem partnership? What APIs do you need to create to onboard them? So marketplaces, uh, you know, I spent the, most of the time on that topic. It's a very hot one nowadays. Should you be one and should you be in one or should you manage one, right? So, so what's your goal here? And, and if you do want to run one, what's your goal in running it? And why should other API providers choose you? And, and will consumers come to you, right? So answer those questions or you're not going to get very far on the marketplace um, front. And then platforms, um, you know, it, however you define it, maybe you even have a different definition than one of my two. Um, is this your API nirvana? Is this what you really want to be in life? And, and if so, then how do you get there? What, what's the steps, um, you know, the, that you need to take to move forward? Um, so, you know, my goal in, in, in creating this presentation was to try to think about where things are going. Uh, if you're not already doing this, you're really not really behind. I mean, this is not something that a lot of businesses are, are doing yet, um, but, but there are some, and, and it's starting to become a very common um, topic of discussion for me, uh, even with companies sometimes that haven't done their first API yet, but, um, but that's another story. So, um, so you know, understand you know, that these things are, are probably in your future in some way or another, whether you participate in one or you run one, um, but, uh, think about, you know, how you want to fit into this. And, and, um, you know, I, I talked only about some of these things that are what we're seeing going on in the future. There, there are many more. So one of the nice things I think that's happening in the API economy nowadays is that people aren't talking about APIs so much anymore, um, that, that they're now talking about these things that you can do with APIs and, and where do you want to go as a business? So. With that, um, I'll, I'll just very quickly show you that in the backup uh, to this, when you get these slides, there are gonna be lots of links that I promised you in the opening. And, and so um, there's six categories of different things. I'm not gonna um, uh, really point out too many of them here, other than uh, the, the top two on the left are places that you can find everything that I write. We're in the process of migrating from the first one to the second one. So in the near future, hopefully you'll just be able to go to this community URL and find everything that I write from now forward. Um, in the meantime, the rest of these slides have everything I've already written. Um, so yesterday we did a, a session, a roundtable on COVID-19, um, which is the bottom right part of this. 
And you can see here on uh, on this page, creating a digital ecosystem, past, present, and future. That's that's a part of what I just uh, described. And then on the next page, business and value and strategy and governance and best practices, which again, I've spoken about many times at, at API Days. The bottom left of the, the first column, the business of API marketplaces and now trending in API platform economy. Those are the other articles that uh, relate to today's presentation. And, and then the last page, just for completeness, is uh, some more architecture and technology focused things and, and some industry focused things. Um, so that's it, Nnedi, I'm all set. Let me- Yeah, uh, we have one, one question in, in one minute there. But uh, uh, there is a question about uh, how do you go from one to the other and how do you align the EPIs with the company strategy if you want to go from a marketplace to platform to ecosystem, right? How, because you talk a lot about governance too. You, you wrote a paper about that, yeah. right? Yeah. On the governance, how, how do you transition culturally and technically on, to, uh, on, on about EPIs? Do I have another 25 minute session to cover this? <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, it's a great question. I, I, obviously, I always start with the goal, right? So what are you trying to accomplish? And, and I wouldn't try to do all three of these things at the same time. But, but you know, if, if, you're, if your goal is, is platform, if that's, you know, the, the kind of definition of where you want to be, then think about the steps to get to platform, which probably is, I need an ecosystem and a marketplace, right? So, so how do I get to each of those first, right? So so in my mind, I kind of presented them in the order that I would attack them. I, I, you know, I, I'd first start with trying to figure out an ecosystem. What, what makes sense from a, a partnering scenario um, for these businesses next door that provide a customer-oriented solution, right? And, and, and these are the partnering scenarios that I want to build, and these are the APIs I need to build to create that kind of an ecosystem, right? Now, uh, so many customers that I talk to, you know, are, are so excited about this marketplace thing that they haven't even built an API yet, but they want to run one, and and and, and so not run an API, run a marketplace. Uh, you know, so so you know that's that's getting a little ahead of yourself. But but if you've got a set of APIs and, and you're starting to think about the ecosystem, then you might think about okay, if I'm building these APIs. How can I establish a platform that not only supports my own APIs, but allows me to expose other people's APIs? And, and so that's part of the governance. And, and again, you know, so much in that area deals with uh, business exposure, um, you know, that, that you're exposing your business to potential, um, if not anything else, at least criticism, because somebody acquired an API through you that, that didn't work or, you know, did something bad. And, and so, so you want to be, you know, aware of these things and, and make a, a, a governed decision at a business level for how am I going to go forward to that. So that's about as short an answer as I can give. <laughs> that, that that's a hard one, but yeah, at least it, it gives some it gives some clues to people about yeah. how to. That. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you, IBM, also to be a platinum sponsor that enable all these attendees to access to this content uh, remotely, uh, right? And also in 15 minutes, so we have a break right now, but in 15 minutes, there will be a workshop, uh, for actually a roundtable on IBM booth about uh, uh, an API management for fire, uh, yeah. regulation, right? Uh, I'll be and, over there too. So yeah, I'll be heading over to that right next to after this. Yeah, so in 15 minutes. And for uh, the other ones, we will go, be back on like industry uh, uh, track, which will be the main stage to uh, to end the conference with talk about, uh, like let's say what's happening in the next 10 years, what are the challenges about e of APIs for, for the next 10 years. Thank you very much, Alan, and see you every, see you everybody in like 15 minutes, either on the, on the IBM booth, uh, either on the industry stage. Thank you. Yep, thank you.